Hi, Scott Whitley here. Hope you're doing well and welcome to this brand new video. This is the first in a series called Learn Piccolo Bass. And whether you've never heard of Piccolo Bass before or you've heard of it and you just don't know where to get started getting into trying it for yourself, this is the video for you. Stick around because later in the video, I'll be sharing my top five things you should work on when you first start playing Piccolo Bass. With that being said, roll that intro. Piccolo bass is essentially a regular bass with special thinner gauge strings fitted and tuned an octave higher than a regular bass. The instrument then takes on a role similar to that of a guitar and is fabulous for playing melodies and chords. This gives bassists the ability to take all the techniques that they've spent a lot of time working on over the years, a lot of time perfecting, and instantly take on a new musical role and explore music and harmony in a way that's pretty hard to do on a regular bass. Personally, I find piccolo bass a great way to further express myself musically, and it's a fantastic learning tool for harmony. Every bassist should give it a shot. Just before we go any further, if we haven't met before, my name's Scott Whitley, and I regularly produce content like this to help you become a better bass player. So please click like, hit subscribe, and don't forget to click on the bell icon so you get notified whenever I make a new video. It's bass virtuoso Stanley Clark who's generally credited with conceptualizing the original piccolo bass. And it was way back in 1974 that Stanley approached luthier Carl Thompson to have his vision become a reality. Stanley was so excited about the bass that he actually had Carl hand deliver it at 3 o'clock in the morning just after its completion. This first ever piccolo bass was actually a 34 inch scale bass. But after an accidental headstock break, Carl lent him a 32-inch bass that he'd just completed and Stanley fell in love with that and decided to purchase it. Hearing Stanley Clark play piccolo bass was a huge inspiration to me as an upcoming player. In fact, Stanley's playing in general on the two albums Time Exposure and Hideaway from the mid-80s had more influence on me as a bassist than pretty much anything else. Along with Stanley Clark, there are a handful of other names that really stand out when I think of piccolo bass. These include Brian Bromberg, Xander Zahn, Carl Clues, and Jeff Schmidt. If you check out any of those guys on YouTube, you're sure to find some of them playing piccolo bass, and they all use piccolo bass in a completely different way. In fact, that's one of the really cool things about piccolo bass. It's still a relatively unexplored concept, and there's loads of scope to really sound original and do your own thing on it. And there are a host of other famous bass players that have a piccolo bass or two in their arsenal, including Bunny Brunel, John Patatucci, Michael Mamring, Joey DeMeo, Chris Hardy, Rhonda Smith, and many more. You can pretty much use any bass as a piccolo, but for me, the first choice would always be a four-string short-scale bass. There are two reasons for this. The first is the strings are under less tension on a short-scale bass, which allows for some nice string bending action and easy playability. Having said that, the sound of a long-scale piccolo bass is much more rich in harmonics and takes on a completely different tonal quality. I'm pretty sure that's what you're listening to when you hear players like Xander Zom. The piccolo bass strings that I use are from GHS, these guys, and they're what I recommend. They are absolutely fantastic strings. I've had quite a long relationship with GHS strings. They're a fantastic company. The quality control is fantastic, really consistent. So if you want to check those out for yourself, there's a link in the description below. It is an affiliated link, but it doesn't cost you any more, and it does support the channel in a small way. So I'm just going to throw this brand new set on this guy. It's a Chowney SWB1. It's my signature bass. And then I can show you how they sound. <sighs> I hate changing strings quickly like that. Now, if I hold this up to the camera, you should be able to see just how thin those strings really are, you know, compared to, like, regular bass strings. Very, very light gauge. The top string, the G string, is actually unwound. And, of course, I've tuned one whole octave higher than a regular bass, like this. So let me try and demonstrate how beautiful piccolo sounds, to me, anyway. You 
know, it's very guitar-esque, but it's definitely got a quality all of its own. That's because of that longer scale. And of course, like I said earlier, you can use bass playing techniques. You can use the techniques you spent years and years and years honing and working on and suddenly kind of be... You know, in a solo register. Now, I'm using certain effects that I think work really well. There's a lot of compression on there and a little bit of reverb. It makes all the difference. If I play dry, it still sounds nice. But for my money, that... Uh, that little bit of reverb and compression, you get this kind of, sw <laughs> kind of swell to the notes, which I really like. Okay. So that's right on the um, on the neck pickup, kind of a little bit stratty, I guess, you know, and you can play chords. You know, you can do slap stuff. So you can use all those techniques that you've been using for years on bass, what, you know, whatever is your squeeze, you can use a plectrum. Handmade by Steve McGrath from Bassgraph, very cool. You know? So that's really, really guitar-esque. Is that even a word? I don't know. I'm going with it. And if you've got more than one pickup, like on this SWB1, if I put it in the middle position so both pickups are on, it's got a, a completely different kind of tone. It's kind of chicken picking. That'll work great for kind of slap stuff, you know? Very, very cool tone. My absolute personal favourite piccolo tone is the bridge pickup soloed. I'm playing hard up here near the neck. And that's the sound I used on uh, that track that was playing earlier, Heaven's Tears. Sounds like this. You know, very, very kind of beautiful, almost classical, a little bit telecaster almost. Lovely tone. And if you want to get even more into that sort of guitar mode, that guitar realm, you can play through a guitar amp or a modelled guitar amp, and you can get sort of sounds like this, right? and pretty much anything in between. And I should point out that a piccolo bass tracks a lot faster than a regular bass if you're using a Roland GK pickup. And again, because it's such a relatively unexplored instrument, there's probably like a ton of other stuff you can do with it too. If you decide to give this a go yourself, then as I said earlier, the link is in the description below where you can purchase these exact strings. And of course, they will fit long scale as well as short scale basses. And believe it or not, usually you can get away with very little or even no adjustment to the bass at all. The only two exceptions being, you may need to adjust the truss rod ever so slightly. It's really easy to do. There are loads of videos out there on YouTube that show you how to do it. And you may find you just want to raise the action on the G string a tiny bit because it's not a wound string. It might just sit a little bit lower in the slot. But again, nine times out of 10, you don't even need to do that. One thing a lot of people are concerned about is whether they have to change the nut or not. Now, in my experience, you don't, and I've done this a lot of times. What's going on here is you can see that the the nut slots are huge compared to the strings, right? So in an ideal world, you take that to a luthier, or if you can do this kind of job yourself, and you'd have a new nut fitted that's kind of cut specifically for the strings. 
But in my experience, as I said, the strings will just kind of sit in the bottom of that U and, you know, I was bending a lot there and I don't get any movement. It's always been fine for me. And I like the fact that um, if the mood takes me, I can take the piccolo strings off and then just throw regular bass strings back on it. So that would be my advice. Just see how you get on without changing the, the nuts at all. I've never had a problem doing that in all the years I've done this, so you should be fine. In the future videos in this series, Learn Piccolo Bass, I'll show you some very specific things that work really well on the piccolo bass, like chord shapes, ways you can use different techniques, ways to approach playing melodies, how to get these kind of tones I've been demonstrating, and much more. Quick shameless plug, if you're enjoying my piccolo bass playing and you'd like to hear more of it in context, then check out my latest EP. Link is on the screen now. It's also in the description below. It's called In My Shoes, and the piccolo bass features heavy on there, so go check it out. You can also buy In My Shoes merch. You'll find it on my YouTube shop, so please check it out. Just before I go, at the beginning of the video, I did say I was going to share my top five things that you should work on when you first start playing piccolo bass. So here we go. Number one is more of a don't than a do, and it is don't try to play regular bass lines on piccolo bass. You'll be really disappointed. And the reason is because of the register that the piccolo bass sits in, it loses that kind of weight you get from playing bass lines. So if I was to play like a walking bass line... <laughs> doesn't really sound like a bass line anymore it's kind of disappointing so that's my first tip don't try and play regular bass on the piccolo number two following on from number one take things like scales arpeggios and melodies and practice those on the bass those are the kind of things that work universally and actually sound even more musical in this kind of higher register here's a couple of examples major scale natural minor And as you play those scales, just really listen to the tone you're getting from each note. Maybe play a little bit more legato than usual, you know. Play soft, and then hard, and then soft. And just get used to that tonal quality and that kind of new sonic space that you're sitting in. Number three, learn to play some melodies. Learning even really simple melodies is a great way to start exploring the piccolo bass. You know, even like nursery rhymes. Etc. And even better, sing or hum along with them as you play them. Number four, if you've previously learned any chords on the bass, then give them a try on the piccolo. You'll be amazed by the way they sound. You know, things like major sevenths. You know, minor sevenths. They all sound... They all sound so much clearer and more musical, and uh, yeah, you'll just kind of be amazed at the way they sound. And number five, if at all possible, try and find a way of adding some reverb to your tone, because it's so inspiring. Playing piccolo bass through a dry setup, like this... For some reason, just doesn't give you a lot back. It's not very inspiring. And just that addition of reverb, and even better, some compression, makes all the difference. If you're interested, the unit I'm using is the B1X4. I'm going to put a link to that in the description below. And if you do purchase one, or you've got one already, and you'd like me to send you the settings that I've used in this video, then just click on the link that's on the screen now. Again, it's in the description below, and I'll personally send you an email with the settings. Thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and click the bell icon, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.